In addition to the functions shown in the quick introduction to TYPO 3.8 LTS, I will now show you a small selection of new and further features that are of interest to editors. In the new long-term support version 8 of TYPO 3, editors can create and edit forms in the new module forms. As you can see, the page tree is hidden in this module. The working surface usually displays an overview of all available forms. In my case, there is no form yet. I add a new form with Create a new form. I enter the form name, Contact form, proceed by clicking on Next and confirm again with Next to create the form. I am in the editing view now. On the left, the form is shown in its arrangement across different pages because forms can be created in the way that the input elements are distributed among several pages. My form is located on only one page. That is why only one step is shown with the name page that I am able to change later on. First with Create New Element, I add three text fields. As you can see, the new form elements are added automatically to the overview on the left. Then I change the label values and mark each of them as required field. Next, I add a text area element and change its label to Message. Lastly, I add a radio button field, whose label I change to Are you a customer already? With the choices Yes and No. Now I remove the automatically generated step name that would otherwise appear as header, as my form is supposed to only show the header of the content element that will be used in later on. My last step is to add two finishes to the form. A finisher determines what happens when a user clicks Submit in the form. In my case, the form input shall be sent as email to the owner of the website by email to receiver. And afterwards, the user shall be led to another page of the website by redirect to a page. In Send Email, I now need to insert the references to the different input fields in the right places, so that the email address of the user will be displayed as sender address in the email to the website owner, and the user's last name and first name as sender name. To further fields, I can add fixed values. In subject, I insert contact form concerning videos and enter the recipient address and recipient name. If you have a look at sender name, you can see that references to input fields and fixed values can be combined as well. As an example, I do separate the references to last name and first name by comma. Now I deactivate Attach Uploads, since my form does not contain the upload of data and is therefore not supposed to have that feature. In Redirect to a page, I now choose by pages the page the user will be redirected to. In the page tree, I click on the page confirmation that I have created earlier. The form is complete now. The only thing left to do is to save it. 
and to insert it into a content element. To do so, I close the form and choose the module page to go through the page contents. I create a new element and in the tab form elements I choose mail form. I enter the header, your message and choose and plug in my newly created form. With save and view page we now can see the new content element containing the form in the front end. Since a form template can be used multiple times in different places of the website, it is possible to adjust the finisher settings individually in every content element it is used in. To demonstrate this, I go to the content element that is to be adjusted, open the tab Plugin and enable Override Finisher Settings. Now, in Email to Receiver, I can change, for example, the subject of the email. And confirm with Save and Close. In the file list, the forms are saved as YAML files in predefined folders. On this website, in the folder User Upload. Even though the forms can be called up as files, they should only be edited in the module forms. The forms therefore serve as templates you can freely use on the website. The last feature I would like to show you is the duplication of a form. The already existing form offers the options Edit this form, Duplicate this form, and remove this form. References shows how often the form template is used on this website. I duplicate this form, enter the new form name and confirm by clicking Next. As you can see, the content of the original form has been taken over. First by Create New Element I add a single select element and change the label to Request for SEO Training. With Add a new row, I add two choices and adjust their label and value. One value I do abbreviate, as values are only important for internal processing and do not appear in the front end. Furthermore, I mark the single select field as required field. Next, I add an element of the type date picker. With the label desired date, and change the date format to British Writing with DMY. Then I remove the element Are you a customer already? by selecting it. Clicking Remove and confirming with Remove. Lastly, I change the order of last name and first name by pressing the mouse button in the left area of one of the elements and dragging it to the desired position while holding the mouse button. As before, I save the form and close it. Now this form can be included in different content elements of this website, just like the other one before. In TYPO3, the backend of long-term support version 8 is designed responsive for the use on mobile devices. To demonstrate this, here you can see a simulation of a common smartphone in landscape view. By using the two icons in the top left corner of the screen, 
You can work in the back end without being impeded by unnecessarily displayed menus. With the left icon, you can hide and unhide the menu of the modules. Likewise, you can hide and unhide the page tree with the second icon. To demonstrate this in use, I want to make some small changes in the content element working with the file list on the recently created page file list. To do so, I edit the element and open the tab Images. I change the width of each element to 450 pixel and change the position and alignment to below center. As usual, I click on Save and View page to see the changes in a new tab in the front end. An additional and very useful function when working in Typo 3 is the menu item Open and Recently Used Documents. Here you do not only see recently used documents, but especially open documents. Elements you have opened you can instantly call up again with one click on the name, or close by one click on the X. This can greatly improve the simultaneous work of multiple editors on one website. The following example will clarify this. I choose the page RTE, where I want to remove a recently added link from the content element setting links in the RTE. But now, next to the icon of the content element, I see that another editor is currently editing this element. In this case, I should never make any changes in this element, as it can lead to overlaps that will cause loss of data when saving. In case an editor missed to close a content element after editing it, the editor will still be shown as active in this element. I did this on purpose in working with the file list to demonstrate the usefulness of this menu. I now can simply click Open and Recently Used Documents and then close the element. So I am no longer shown as currently working in the specific content element. Frequently checking this menu has the capability to enhance the workflow of all editors. Typo 3 features many further things, like extensions for image sliders or news, that would require intensified training. To test the presented features yourself, you can simply use our matching Typo 3 test website, typo 3 testtentorg where you can get editor access to the backend free of charge.